up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Project E46. Um, you may notice I'm in a very different environment right now. I'm not even near the E46. I'm driving the One Series, sitting in Los Angeles traffic, which is great. So I thought I'd talk to you about today's episode. So in the last episode, I removed the rear subframe and differential bushings from the subframe assembly. Uh, today, the process continues with a more bushings, but they're much more important than those. Here's why. With a subframe or diff bushing, once you pound out the old bushing and put a new polyurethane one in, you're basically done. That bushing sits there, it doesn't really move at all, and you're good to go. Today, I'm gonna to be handling the rear trailing arm bushings, which, unlike the subframe or diff bushings, which don't really move much, a rear trailing arm bushing is a, a control arm bushing where it has to move a normal operation. It moves up and down as the suspension compresses and rebounds. But unlike a control arm bushing, which on a lot of cars just kind of goes up or down or kind of like tilts in one axis, a rear trailing arm bushing is a, what's called a multi-axis bushing, which basically means due to the way the trailing arm is mounted to the chassis of the car, the bushing doesn't go like this or just like this. It moves on multiple axes, multiple axes in normal operation. So polyurethane is actually not a good idea for a rear trailing arm bushing. What you want is actually a hardened rubber bushing. That way the trailer arm can move through the full motion and not get bound up. If you put a polyurethane bushing in there, sure, it's very easy to replace, and it's basically a lifetime replacement, but you induce binding in the rear suspension because that poly doesn't want to move the way the trailing arm, the rear, the way the rear trailing arm needs to move in its normal motion. So what you want to do is use a hardened rubber bushing that way the trailing arm can still move in its full range of motion, but it doesn't move excessively. Because what happens is with a really soft bushing, that rear trailing arm can move too far and go way out of its normal geometry. And that causes the rear suspension to do some pretty funky stuff and it kind of causes the car to be unpredictable. What you really need to do and what the aftermarket has really embraced in the past couple years in the BMW community is using a hardened rubber bushing and that's great, but it, it can still have the problem of moving too much. So you put in what are called rear trailing arm limiters. Basically the little pocket that, that that bushing sits in, you put a limiter, which is like a solid piece of metal or poly on either side of the bushing that physically limits how much the bushing can move. That way the bushing can move the correct amount it needs to move to have your suspension work correctly, but it doesn't move too far so that your Dy dynamic alignment goes way out of whack or the bushing prematurely fails. So today I'm going to show you the correct way on how to replace rear trailing arm bushings and install limiters. So let's cut to the footage. Um, after tearing the car down I did find a few more things that required replacement. I think I mentioned it earlier in the video. So um, here is my next order from ECS. Um, male heavy duty uh, rear trailing arm bushings. Uh, ECS branded uh, Delarin rear trailing arm bushing limiters. Uh, I actually rented the tool for the rear trailing arm bushings from a forum member on E46 Fanatics. Um, because I'm not replacing the trailing arms with, with poly, it is possible to actually install these stock type bushings incorrectly and damage them. So I, w I actually went ahead and rented the tool for that. Um, to hopefully save myself some misery. All right, so I'm using the MIS uh, rear trailing arm bushing tool for BMW E36 and E46. And um, as great of a resource as the internet is, it was a bit lacking in pictures as to how to set this tool up for the E46 rear end. And because the tool is made for two different chassis, it comes with a couple different like pieces. So um, just for my personal future reference and for anyone else who's watching this, here is how you set up the MIS um, trailing arm bushing tool for an E46 rear trailing arm. So I thought you did have to use this piece because it has this, this nice chamfered edge that matches the stock bushing, but that's not true. Uh, it's too large and it ends up interfering with the uh, mount. So you use the smaller piece and press it up against the bushing and then you line up the MIS tool with the little cutouts on the edge of the trailing arm pushing itself and that lets it press up against the metal. And then it's just a matter of tightening this down with an 18 millimeter wrench. Um, 
I'm not sure, it might be standard because 18 feels a little bit loose and 17 feels a little bit tight. So it might be um, an SAE size, but 18 mil seems to work. So this is how you have the tool set up to do the rear trailing arm on the E46. And as you can see, it's not like a piece of cake, but it's much easier than doing it, doing it the other way. Oops, I'm wrong, goes this way. It's a bit tricky because I'm holding the camera so I'm not able to stabilize the trailing arm assembly because it's off the car in this case. If, they, if the trailing arm is on the car, uh, that makes it a piece of cake because the car kind of braces, braces against it for you. But this is how you use the um, MIS and I'm sure a bunch of other people have the same tool, Koch maybe. Um, this is how you use the rear trailing arm bushing tool for BMW E46. For about a minute, just to keep spinning the wrench and getting the tool going, but now the trailing arm bushing is freed. Piece of cake came out super clean. Um, you can find this tool for rent on the E46 Fanatics website and the forums. It ends up costing about 40 bucks all said and done, and it's totally worth it. Actually, this fun fact, I'm looking at this now. This was the good trailing arm bushing. The other side's totally damaged, but even this one's torn all the way through, I see. So, I'm glad to be replacing these. Okay, so um, no joke with the proper tool. Uh, the rear trailing arm bushings came out in maybe five, 10 minutes max. Um, so let me show you the condition of the trailing arms. And this is probably part of the clunking issue I was experiencing along with the rear diff bushing. This is a good one. You can see here it's actually torn around the perimeter. And the same on the back side. Torn around the center. This is the bad one. You can see where it's just totally shot. Um, completely hollowed out. This actually probably would have failed and been real nasty. Um, so we'll put in the uh, male heavy duty bushings along with the uh, limiters and then we should be good to go. Throw these in the trash along with all these old bushings. So I am reinstalling, um, or I should say, I'm installing the new rear trailing arm bushings. And so I'm gonna take this video just for my personal reference and for anyone who may be watching this. I had a bit of confusion as to how to set up the tool to do this properly. So here's how it's set up. This is the outside of the trailing arm. See the brake rotors facing outwards. Um, you have the larger block with the, with the uh, chamfered inner area for the uh, metal inside of the bushing that goes on the outside and then you flip the tool around um, in reverse order that way the threads can reach all the way out and then you just pull it in like this all right so that was my process of removing replacing the rear trailing arm bushings and the correct way to do it which with the hardened rubber bushing and the Delrin uh, limiters. Hopefully you found this video useful. Uh, please stay tuned. I'm trying to do uh, two of these Project E46 videos per week until we're caught up um, because so much has happened with this car. So it's really hard to kind of jam it all in there and explain everything that's been going on. But uh, yeah, stay tuned. The next couple episodes are really fun and I'm almost done with this really intense process of obviously dropping the subframe and doing everything you need to do to an E46 track car. So stay tuned, we'll try and have the next one out in a couple days. Thanks for watching, take care, bye.